Good morning, everyone. Josh of Severe Weather. Happy Wednesday to you. A destructive day yesterday of severe weather across the south and east, extreme amounts of wind and rain. And unfortunately, we're not even close to done with this kind of weather pattern. Another big storm takes aim at some of the same areas on Friday. Winter weather on the cold side of the storm. And then we're going to see an outbreak of some major cold coming down into the western two-thirds of the country by the end of this weekend into early next week and winter weather with that. So things are going to get really nuts here over the next several days. And I wish I could say that things are just going to kind of ease into winter here. But instead, we're going to see brutal cold and with it, likely another snowstorm. This one getting farther south and east into places that have not really seen winter yet uh, into North Texas, uh, Arkansas, parts of the Mid-South. Tennessee could get a lot of snow early next week. And interior sections of the Northeast uh, potentially have a major storm early next week. Before then, though, we've got another strong system uh, taking shape in the West today. That is going to move into the deep South tomorrow night and early Friday. And unfortunately, we're looking at another area under the gun for severe weather. And this one could potentially bring some stronger tornadoes with it as well. And also in areas a little bit further to the North than the last outbreak into the Tennessee Valley, into parts of the Carolinas that didn't necessarily have that severe weather. So I'm going to kind of break down uh, what we're looking at here. This is the infrared satellite from this morning. You can see our powerful storm system uh, moving through the mid-Atlantic and northeast. Uh, very cold cloud tops sweeping quickly through New England, bringing tremendous amounts of rain. Uh, I've seen reports that some folks in places like Charlotte and Boston saw in their lifetime the heaviest rain they've ever seen, and I certainly believe it from what I'm seeing here. Uh, but unfortunately, another storm getting ready to take shape. If you take a look here at the uh, satellite, uh, look at the southern branch of the jet stream here. Do you see these screaming winds here? Uh, they are going to once again draw this storm system in the northwest down across uh, the southern U.S. and then cut up across the Great Lakes. And this next storm is going to bring a pretty big area of severe weather. We've got more instability this time. Winds aloft aren't maybe quite in the same exact spot, but they're close. Uh, and we are going to see this storm strengthening by the time it moves up into the Great Lakes, producing blizzard conditions uh, in places like Wisconsin, northern Illinois, Michigan, western New York, and portions of Ontario as we get into the end of the week and beginning of this upcoming weekend, and then heavy lake effect snow to follow. So I would love to be able to catch everybody in this video. I want to keep it relatively short. We're probably going to run over 20 minutes today, but Here's a look at the map with all of our hazards, major flooding going on across portions of the Northeast with coastal flooding. And we've got a winter storm warning over portions of Maine to slap on top of the heavy rain and the heavy wind that we've got. Uh, we have winter weather advisories over parts of the Great Lakes and into the Appalachians here, but the next storm is getting even more colorful, unfortunately, with blizzard warnings over the interior of the Northwest, over the Cascades, the Olympic Peninsula, uh, as well as portions of the Idaho and Oregon, East, uh, Eastern Oregon Mountains and Winter Storm uh, watches all the way down into portions of Arizona. And we see yet another Winter Storm watch over parts of the Central Plains and the Heartland. Uh, here's a look at our temperature invasion coming into the Northwest. Uh, this time, uh, we are going to see a piece of the polar vortex dropping down. And uh, that is going to contribute to heavier snowfall rates on the cold side of our next couple of storms. Uh, temperature anomalies here are going to be as much as 60 degrees Fahrenheit below the average, uh, meaning this is some very severe cold coming down. And you can see it gets down into Texas, Oklahoma here by the end of the weekend and then shifts south and east into the Tennessee Valley. We have anomalies of 30 to 40 degrees below average. Uh, the pinks indicate 30 degrees Fahrenheit below average. So a huge flip coming here. Um, this cold does get down into Florida and onto the east coast. Uh, it is suppressed a little bit in that we're not going to see the extreme cold all the way down into uh, the Florida Peninsula. It will certainly be colder than it has been, but not extreme cold. Uh, that kind of cold is reserved more for the Central Plains and the Ohio River Valley and into the Appalachians. Farther east, uh, we are going to see some blocking in place over Greenland and eastern Canada, meaning warmer than average temperatures there with a high pressure is that allows the cold to come in underneath it rather than uh, to the north and east, but it'll be cold enough to support a major storm here, maybe two storms next week. So we'll talk about that in the coming days. You can see the cold continues in waves here. Another one comes next weekend and into the following week. 
and then another one lined up behind it. So uh, the second half of January, really the second two thirds of January, likely to be well below average, especially in the Northwest and across the central United States and into the Ohio Valley. Uh, and <clears throat> I'll show you the kind of cold that we're dealing with. This is just one model, this is the GFS, but you can see 20 to 30 below Fahrenheit temperatures across much of Western Canada by Friday morning. And these are going to drop down in places like Seattle where we're gonna have teens and low 20s, uh, winter weather expected in the Pacific Northwest, even cold into Southern Cal 40s, uh, but with wind included in that. And we just see this cold continuing to recycle here, multiple waves coming down as pieces of the polar vortex drop in. Uh, the central United States certainly gonna see this cold as well. Not terrible today, but as we get to tomorrow, it starts dropping. And then as we get to Friday and Saturday, uh, we see much of the Dakotas are gonna be 20, 20 Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Fahrenheit below zero or colder. And I've never been in that kind of cold. I know folks up here have, but it is, it is certainly something you wanna take seriously. And that cold spreads into Illinois. We could see the Chicago suburbs at 10 below zero on Sunday morning uh, with another push coming on Monday. Uh, parts of North Texas could see one of their coldest January days on record. And that cold drops down into places like Houston where we're in the twenties here on Tuesday morning, struggling to get past freezing. Tuesday afternoon all the way down south, and the cold just continues to come in waves. There will be some differences on timing in the longer range, but know that it is certainly still going to be around here. In the eastern United States, whoops, thought I had the eastern U.S. up, and I guess I didn't. All right, no worries. We'll get there. Uh, here's a look at the eastern United States, and you can see uh, temperatures right now are a little below average. Then our next front drops through, and we see uh, some warming coming into the mid-Atlantic region briefly on Friday night into early Saturday. We could be uh, close to 70 degrees here at midnight on Saturday morning, but then temperatures start dropping quickly. And by the end of the weekend, we're below average, but it doesn't stop there. We've got more cold coming. And by Tuesday morning, we could see sub-zero temperatures uh, in places like State College, Pennsylvania, uh, as well as Boone, North Carolina, and Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, single digits in Northern Alabama, Northwestern Georgia, Northern Mississippi, including Memphis, uh, and teens all the way down to maybe as far south as Interstate 10 here on Tuesday morning. Uh, Wednesday, chilly as well, but we see some moderation. There's still going to be a southern jet here, uh, which is going to bring some potentially interesting weather to the south, uh, but it's also going to suppress how far south and deep that cold does get. Uh, Florida is not really going to participate in the worst of the cold, but it will cool down. And certainly the heat will be running here Tuesday night in some places, but we just don't see that kind of extreme cold getting all the way down into South Florida at this point. Here's a look at the European model. Um, I could show you all the models, but we'll be here all day. The European has been pretty consistent. And I like where it's trending, but you know it could certainly be wrong in the longer range. But you can see here's our first major storm moving through Southern Missouri on Friday morning. The Ozarks region get hit with heavy rain north and west. We see snow rates picking up as our storm strengthens Friday afternoon over southern Illinois. Uh, the big shift here from the last couple of days is that the low pressure center has gone from the south side of the Ohio River up into central Indiana. And that means, unfortunately, if you want to see big snows in Indianapolis, this storm really isn't going to do that for you. In fact, we may see rain all the way up into far southern Michigan and northwest Ohio due to the fact that the storm is strengthening. Uh, it's getting driven by a uh, very intense jet stream that allows the warmer air to get farther north. Uh, but on the cold side of this storm across central Michigan, across northern Illinois, eastern Wisconsin, the UP into Canada, um, it is very quickly going to go downhill fast here on Friday into Friday night. And I do think we are going to be dealing with blizzard conditions in parts of this region. The Lake Michigan area, eastern Lake Superior, northern Lake Huron, all at risk of seeing blizzard conditions at the end of the week and um, very heavy rain coming up the eastern seaboard. It could start as some snow in the interior northeast and maybe even blizzard conditions in Quebec and northern New England before a switch. Some wintry mix, maybe a little ice in here before we go over to heavy rain. So not a northeast snowstorm, unfortunately, for those that do want to see that. I know that's not all of you guys, of course, but a lot of you do. Uh, but we have better chances coming behind that. Here comes the cold on Sunday and another storm moving into the middle Pacific coast on Saturday is gonna move across the central Rockies and settle into the central and Southern Plains. And this has some potential to bring some ice well into the heart of Texas, uh, some significant snow to the Red River area over into central and Southern Arkansas. 
And eventually uh, on Monday, uh, if this model is correct, we are probably talking about uh, at least a significant snowstorm for Western Tennessee and Kentucky, but maybe even more so uh, over Eastern parts of these states later in the day. It'll be a point where we do have some rain and maybe thunderstorms over Northern Florida. So the cold is only gonna get so far deep, but you can see the polar vortex here uh, already down into the Omaha area Monday afternoon. And that's gonna drive sub-freezing temperatures all the way down close to Houston, Alexandria, Louisiana to near Birmingham. And so uh, we could have some impactful weather, including school closings on Monday in parts of the Mid-South, maybe as far south as Jackson, Mississippi or Huntsville, Alabama. So stay tuned on it. I'll show you snow totals from this. Um, this particular run of the European takes the low right up the coast, a classic nor'easter. Uh, it's probably going to be more rain for the big cities, but if this low goes farther east, that would switch to snow. Uh, by Monday night, Tuesday morning. But again, uh, trying to predict the exact location and strength of this low with it being five, six days away, uh, the confidence level is not fully there yet. So uh, keep in mind, this will probably change. The GFS is not showing the kind of snow that the European is showing, but the pattern does certainly favor a big East Coast storm. So the difference is gonna be where this low pressure system actually sets up. Is it gonna be East of Boston? or is it gonna be over Western Massachusetts like this run of the European shows? And that will make a big difference, but uh, a potentially major storm with it here and more storms to follow after that um, for the following weekend. So we'll talk about that more later. Oh, there it went, okay. Uh, here's the European map showing where our snow uh, piles up here. Eastern Canada, Northern New England with this current storm, uh, a minor storm over the Dakotas. Then our next storm from Nebraska through the upper Great Lakes here. Uh, Friday, Friday night, and early on Saturday, blizzard conditions expected. The west gets pelted with very heavy snow over the interior of the northwest and the Sierra Nevada. And then we start to see snow chances climbing all the way down into northwestern Louisiana, northern Alabama, western North Carolina, and right on up into interior sections of the northeast. And the biggest question mark is what happens on the I-95 corridor. And unfortunately, I don't have a great answer for you. I can only speculate and I would rather let you guys know that I just don't know fully yet at this point. Uh, here's a look at what's going to happen in the coming days here with one storm leaving us here. The next one drops down and we see things starting to take shape here later tomorrow night. Pretty decent snow out of this over parts of Iowa and southern Wisconsin, maybe southeast Minnesota as well. Uh, but the storm really gets cranking after Friday afternoon. This model doesn't go past one o'clock on Friday eastern. Uh, noon Friday, but you can see heavy rain moving all the way up into central Indiana out of this um, as that trend has been north and west with our models um, from a few days ago, which I think some of you remember showed some heavy snow in places like St. Louis, Indianapolis, Dayton, Ohio. Uh, unfortunately, this storm looks to be a little too strong, too far north for that to happen. Our blend of models from the next storm shows a large area likely to pick up eight inches of snow or more potentially 16 inches across eastern Wisconsin, northern lower Michigan, much of Ontario when you get north of and east of Lake Huron and then north of the St. Lawrence River. Uh, and we could see significant snow from this as well over parts of Maine and New Hampshire. And then we're gonna see some lake effect coming in off the lakes behind it. Uh, not as big a storm, but this is the blend of the model. So one model uh, in here uh, could be a lot lower than what another model is. So we're just taking the blend, the average at this point, which isn't always the best forecast, but um, I don't want to just show you one model and kind of wish cast the most on you and then see it change. That's just not how I forecast things. So anyway, that's how things look with that system. The next system certainly has more favorable snow chances into parts of Oklahoma, Kansas, northern and central Arkansas, the Ozarks region. And Sunday night, we could certainly see some major total, even Sunday afternoon, but Sunday night, some very heavy totals in parts of Arkansas. And then that shifts eastward into Tennessee and Kentucky and could get as far south as northwest Louisiana here Monday afternoon. Uh, so we're going to be watching this next system here. It also has an ice threat with it because what happens is the cold air at the surface comes in and undercuts some milder air aloft. And so there may be a layer where... Um, what's falling as snow switches to rain, but the cold air comes under it and drops that temperature below freezing. This could cause some major issues around the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex and especially on eastward here by Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening. We see potentially over a quarter inch of ice uh, in the Arklatex region and even some ice potential all the way down to Round Rock, Austin, San Antonio, 
uh, just north and west of Houston, Alexandria, Jackson, Mississippi. So again, this is one model run, uh, but you guys understand that this isn't going to be a major snowstorm into Texas. It has just as much potential to be ice in here, unfortunately, uh, with the time frame being Sunday night and into Monday, ending Monday evening. Uh, behind our storm here, uh, we're going to see some significant lake effects coming in off of the eastern lakes, as well as off of Lake Superior. Totals in the feet are possible. Here's our next storm on the European. I teased you a little bit before, but we see Monday night, uh, the Ohio River certainly has a chance of seeing significant snow, and this could shift. Uh, those of you in central and northern Ohio and Indiana that have kind of gotten missed on both sides here, this could certainly still shift in your direction and in your favor, but it also could shift south and east. And again, a little too soon to say that, uh, but this particular run of the European really goes nuts over the interior of the northeast with potentially two or more feet of snow. Uh, that is, uh, don't get too obsessed with this number. I'm sure it's going to change, but know that certainly that possibility is there where we start next week off with some significant snow in the Mid-South, and then by Tuesday, we see it across the interior of the Northeast. Uh, could this shift east and New York City and Philly get big snow? Absolutely. We haven't seen that kind of luck. Uh, if, if you are a snow lover in the Northeast, we, we've been unlucky, but we could see that happen out of this. Uh, could it shift back to the West? Certainly that's the case as well. Uh, it's still almost a week away. Um, here's a look, though, at what's going to happen this weekend across upstate New York. And Saturday night, maybe an intense couple of bands of lake effect take shape here. And I think there's a playoff game in Buffalo on Sunday. And this band looks pretty favorable in Orchard Park. So keep an eye on that. Could be very interesting there uh, on Sunday afternoon, potentially over a foot of snow in both of these bands uh, coming off the lakes. Uh, taking a look at winds, we've had strong winds this morning across New England. This system is going to still be pretty windy today, but we will see it letting up some. Unfortunately, though, more coming here by Thursday night and Friday across parts of the Mid-South. Wind gusts of 50, 60 miles per hour could bring us some power outages. And then as we head into Friday afternoon and evening, we see some major wind up the spine of the Appalachians uh, from East Tennessee, from the Smokies, straight on up into the Laurel Highlands and the Alleghenies. And Potential wind gusts may get up to 70 miles per hour in portions of West Virginia. Uh, so do expect some likely power outages here Friday afternoon and evening. Uh, we will see more strong wind coming up through New England. I don't think quite as strong as this storm we're dealing with this morning, but certainly still a pretty intense storm Friday night and the first part of Saturday. And then strong winds over the, over the Great Lakes, enhancing the lake effects though and bringing very dangerous travel uh, by Saturday and Saturday night. So we've got a lot to watch coming from that. Uh, rainfall totals are obviously very extreme here in the Northeast with major flooding. The next storm uh, brings heavier rain to areas a little bit farther to the West um, and uh, over parts of Southern Illinois and Indiana, generally speaking an inch to two inches. Uh, the Northeast will have some heavy rain. It's not gonna help things, but it won't be as intense as this storm. And then as we head to the following week, we see yet another sizable amount of uh, precipitation. A lot of this probably snow uh, by the time we get to Tuesday. I do want to talk about severe weather. Um, I know there were fatalities from this outbreak. Here's a look at what Thursday night looked like. Uh, a lot of overnight activity in Alabama, Western Florida, uh, with multiple tornadoes. I've seen some of the damage out of Panama City, and my thoughts and prayers with everybody down there. Uh, yesterday was a, a very busy day as well, farther east. Um, I had my map up, and I don't know what happened here, but um, let me, uh, I was going to change the date on it. Here we go. Sometimes a browser just refreshes when you're not even uh, looking at it. But a lot of severe weather reports, over 350 reports. Uh, damaging tornado in the Bamberg, South Carolina area. Very sad to see. Damaging storms in southern portions of Georgia. Uh, but just look at the amount of wind that we saw here yesterday. Uh, damaging winds around Charlotte. But at the coastline, we had wind gusts well over 70 miles per hour. I even saw some reports of winds over 100 miles per hour near the coast here of the Emerald Coast of uh, North Carolina. So incredible amounts of wind. Uh, the next storm I don't think is gonna have as high a ceiling with the wind, but the position of it is actually a little more favorable for more folks to see severe weather. We see the threat all the way up to Little Rock here on Thursday. Um, there is a tornado risk all the way up into this area, lower Arkansas, Northern Louisiana, eventually getting into Western Mississippi around daybreak on Friday, uh, and certainly some damaging wind potential and hail as well. But Friday, Unfortunately, we can't let our guards down. We've got yet another area of enhanced risk for severe weather. Uh, it's a little farther north and west of what the previous storm was, but it is in some of mainly the same areas. 
places like Montgomery and Alabama and uh, Atlanta and Augusta and Athens over to Columbia, Charlotte, and getting close to Raleigh as well. Uh, and a lot of this is going to be Friday afternoon and into Friday night. The timing a little bit later in the day when you get to the Carolina school. I don't know yet if we're going to have school closings on Friday or delays. In fact, much of this may come after the end of the day activities wind down. But Friday night certainly not going to be good here. Uh, we've got a hashed area of where the potential for the uh, significant severe weather can happen. And it encompasses a lot of the southeast again. And the one thing I will say is that depending on if our models shift a little more north and west, we could see this chance get bumped up in middle Tennessee, northern Alabama, maybe even south central Kentucky. So uh, if you're in Nashville and uh, Clarksville, you definitely need to be watching this system more closely as well. Here's why. Here's our current storm. You see the cyclone. You see the fast winds. This was last night. Um, the uh, Just a, kind of a neutral trough here, kind of a north-south trough and then becoming negative, the next system is going to go negative more quickly. Uh, you can see this tilt right here from northwest to southeast. What that does is it draws more moisture and it makes things more unstable and gives us a better window to see those tornadoes. While the overall winds are a little bit weaker with this system, the configuration of the trough is actually more favorable for tornadoes to occur. So we definitely need to be on our toes for what's going to happen here Friday. This is going to shift into New England. Um, it's going to move out of here by Saturday, and then we see the cold air pouring in. You see this jet from the northwest, a uh, very active winter pattern here coming. Um, and then yet here's our next winter system by early next week. Here's a look at the convective available potential energy. This is storm fuel, and um, that was kind of the one thing that kind of held us from getting to the ceiling yesterday. It was still intense, don't get me wrong, but that's why we didn't have um, dozens of multiple fatality tornadoes. Uh, this system has more storm fuel with it. It gets farther north, actually all the way up to the Ohio River here on Friday afternoon. And then Friday night, pretty impressive as we get into the Carolinas and even southern Virginia here. Um, this is about 9, 10 o'clock at night. And uh, we may see temperatures getting close to 70 degrees in places like Wilmington. So Friday night, things could be very much uh, rocking and rolling across this area before the system moves out. We'll have more detail in the coming days, but I just want to show you where the storms are likely to set up. This is tomorrow night, Oklahoma, Northeast Texas, uh, South Central states. This is Friday. We see multiple waves. Florida will have some stronger storms. I don't think they're going to get as far south as the last system, Tampa and Orlando. Keep an eye on things, but I think the majority of that severe weather does stay north of your area. Uh, but northern Florida, unfortunately, could be under the gun again. But look at this. We could see lightning into southern Indiana on Friday around lunchtime. Uh, multiple waves of showers and storms, a lot of lightning here. We could see supercells in the warm sector and just overall a more robust warm sector than the last system. Um, while the winds, the, the ceiling for the winds is a little bit lower, the amount of storm fuel is actually higher. So we definitely have a dangerous situation that could unfold here Friday afternoon. And here's Friday evening and the Carolinas could get hit with multiple waves of showers and storms. Uh, and we may even see lightning all the way up to the Mason-Dixon line here in the evening hours on Friday. So a very intense storm system coming. Uh, look at one such model. Just kind of shows you the timing on this here. Arkansas could have severe weather Thursday night. Uh, Northern Florida is going to have some heavy rain. And then we've got to watch this boundary in here as it lifts north. It opens us up into a warm sector Friday afternoon where we could have some severe weather over South Georgia. And then the main front back here could also produce severe weather. So two modes of severe weather possible. Uh, we'll have more on that in the coming days as our models get into range. Usually we've got to get to about 36 hours to really know what's going to happen. Uh, I urge you to come back here and visit me tomorrow morning. I'll have another video. Uh, appreciate y'all's time today. Um, I give all the glory to God who has called me to do this, to be a blessing to other folks. He is my strength. Psalm 28, 7 says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth. And will my song, and my, with my song, will I praise him? You know, no matter what good or bad we're going through, um, we can't do it all ourselves. I believe we've been created here by God to be a blessing to each other and to trust in the Lord and to get our strength from him. And I just want to share that. That brings me joy. I pray that it brings you joy as well. And if you're going through heartbreak right now, um, I, I just want to pray for you because I know uh, personally, prayer has always helped knowing that. We need to humble ourselves and to give all the glory to God and to allow him to strengthen us uh, and to protect us from these attacks that the enemy has on us. 
uh, whether it be weather related or just anything else you may be dealing with, health, money, whatever you're going through. I just know that the Lord wants us to trust in him. And I wanted to share that good news with you today because I really do think I'm here to encourage folks, not just to share the weather. So I hope you all have a wonderful Wednesday. Please be safe and we'll catch up tomorrow morning. See you then.